All of your long-term debt is booked. Um, the pension liability is recorded this year. That's a new item. Um, all those things you'll see on these financial statements to arrive at a full accrual financial statement. And, <coughs> and all of your funds are condensed into one column. You'll see that one column, governmental activities, on page 39. That's everything collapsed into one, which is very different from how you manage your day-to-day day-to-day um, operations to keep your day-to-day -day records. Uh, we're going to move on to the fund financial statements. You'll see that on pages 41, 42, 41 is the balance sheet. So here, this is this looks more in line with how you keep your records. This is exactly how you keep your records. There's a separate fund for the general fund. Uh, there's a separate fund for the performance bonds, uh, Wentworth School construction. So the, uh, I guess part is another significant item, and then everything else is collapsed into other governmental funds. And so again, this this is going to mirror what your internal records show. Roof, to print all of our fund reports and we'd be able to tie out these, these numbers. Um, so lastly, this is probably, you know, probably you're probably most interested in that we'll focus on is page 44, which is the budgetary basis. There are some slight differences between the fund and budgetary basis, but um, <coughs> that's significant. But so, so for the year, um, let's see. The results for the year, you'll see that uh, total revenues were favorable to budget by 1.8 million. Um, most of that had to do with property taxes. I'm sorry, not property taxes, excise taxes. Uh, about 640,000 of the increase was excise taxes. Um, unclassified was better than budget by about 523,000. I think most of that was community services, about 180,000 was community services, and 100,000 was, uh, I think, inspections and permits. So, Will, I see you. Searching for a number, the first line taxes is where that uh, excise would be reported along with property tax. And the like. <coughs> there's, a, there's another schedule out back that gives you a lot more detail. Um, it gives you all how these totals are derived at. Um, these are just the summary totals here on page 44. For those on the Finance Committee last year, we had a very strong sense this time last year that we were going to far exceed expectations for excise. Uh, knew that and kind of understood that going into the, uh, you know, the final pros of the budget for the current year. For the year, the overall plan, you can see if you look. Um, and 
so you compare that to what the actual bottom line is. So under the actual column, uh, net change in fund balance increased by two million thirteen thousand eight fifty. So again, that's a you know, favorable result overall. You had planned to spend out of fund balance, and you ended up having favorable results. So that fund balance actually increased. And so at the end of the year, your fund balance is eleven million seven zero two five seventy eight. And there's, we've got a slide on that and kind of can cover some detail on that as well. Uh, just to look at where that stands as a percentage and what your policy is. So. Could I ask you a question, Kate? I'm trying to just make questions. Questions have been posed to me and I just don't have any answers. On the education, I know you were pressed during the last year estimating where you might end up, and it looks like, by my recollection, we exceeded where you thought. And it's we certainly did, good. Yeah. Um, uh, are there any particular things that you could identify that was so? Now, the one driver that bumped it up higher than usual. I expected somewhere in the 300, 350 range, and we ended up with an extra almost $200,000 in debt service uh, because the amount that I had budgeted for that payment then shifted because of some refunding that happened sort of in the budget process. And once the budget process was completed, we ended up not needing as much as I had in there. <coughs> so the, that's the, the biggest that's ticket the item in there. Over and above the usual savings that I anticipated. If you want to <coughs> turn the page on the uh, the handout that I gave you, I um, just got a couple of just a couple of pieces of information here regarding the new uh, pension standard that I mentioned. So all all governments are required. Um, on, you know, if you remember, I talked about the full accrual basis financial statements that are in the front of the financial statement to present, to record, present, and disclose your obligation as it relates to the main public employees retirement system. Um, so the towns, every, everybody in the state gets a share of the net uh, pension liability of the, plan, of the plan as a whole. Town of Scarborough's net pension liability is calculated to be 2688554 dollars That's been, you know, again, like I said, reported in the full accrual financial statements. It doesn't, it doesn't affect your fund balance. Um, you know, in, in the in the to the extent that you know you're not required to fund it immediately or come up with that money next year, um, but certainly presumably depending on how the retirement system performs over the future years, you know you may see your uh, you know, monthly contributions increase as as they their actuaries determine how much is needed for <coughs> the liability. Um, related to that as well, so if if you're hopefully you're aware that the the, the state also contributes. Uh, a majority of uh, school systems uh, retirement contributions, so related to teachers. And that's, uh, I think it's somewhere in that $3 million range uh, that they contribute every year on behalf of the town of Scarborough. Uh, so that means that the state is obligated to pick up and record. That's calculated to be 19539727 So, um, you know, certainly with that arrangement, as long as that holds true going forward, the state is on the hook for uh, the largest portion of what would be the retirement of our employees. Christian, do they anticipate that we will at some point have to fund this pension liability? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's going to be not, I, I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> think it would be like in any given year, but maybe you know, maybe over time you may see contributions increase. I mean, I think the main um, the, the main pension plan is, is relatively well funded. I think the teachers' plan, uh, as of as of the date of the report here, was like 94% of the total obligation was funded, and I think maybe the PLD plan was like 80, high 80s, 84, 85%, something like that. And so that's considered to be really good. I mean, there's other right. state pension systems that are in really poor shape. Uh, so. So the, the town's liability would only exist to the extent that the town's share would increase, or the town's expected share would increase, or not not so. Um, you mean it would, sorry, can you say that again? It would. So <laughs> <laughs> our liability that we're booking here yes. would only increase if our expected contribution were to okay. increase, or not so? It's Well, it's yeah, that is one, that is the primary. Uh, driver, they look at your <coughs> contributions compared to everybody else's, and that's how they allocate your share of the pool. Yeah. But it's also, I can also tell you, I mean, also experience. So I can tell you that this number for June 30, uh, your June 30, 16 financial statements is double because the pension plan did not have a good year. 
two thirty fifteen. So, it so went it's relevant. It's relative to the health of the plan, not the health to of the, the plan. Yeah, they went it. from having a sixteen percent return for the June thirty fourteen year end to a two percent return for the year just ended. So that resulted in you know, a big swing in the liability. Mm. But the theoretical liability, I can't. Can you describe a scenario whereby we would need to write a check for that amount? Um, right, it would be if, if, if you, I mean, if you, if you decided to, I guess, terminate, you know, all employee participation in the plan and required to fund it, I mean, I think they, you know, they'd probably set up a payment plan with you, so it wouldn't necessarily come in one year, but, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's always going to be an overtime thing because it's, you know, it's, it's a big actuarial assumption, so it's, you know, it's, it's no way, no way, by, by no way means perfect, but it's, at least it's, it's been presented and identified so that people are aware of it. And I think that's the general idea. It's really out there for your, you know your bond rating agencies. They want right. to they want to see they want to know what it is, and that's <coughs> why it's come about. Um, so something just to make mention as well. Next, uh, so that was the new standard we implemented this year in June 30th, 2018. There's going to be um, a requirement that there's a full accrual of what's called the other post employment post-employment benefit liability. So this is um, retiree health care, where there's, a, there's, a there's another actuarial calculation related to that. And as that stands now, that would be about, a, that's another million dollars on top of what we've got booked now. But again, that's, um, you know, that's an estimate and it affects your requirements to report on the full accrual basis as it relates to your financials, but doesn't necessarily affect your budget. It's not gonna affect your budget necessarily right away. So I'm so, if I can ask a clarifying question between this slide and the previous one, I'm looking at the total, I guess, on the obligation side. So given the performance that you said regarding the uh, pension plan, our, our contribution is incre they increased this year because it did not perform well. How much was that again? Was that, do you think the reality for this new year? Right. Um, yeah, I guess I'm not really sure what your contribution. I know the, I, with some of the clients I was at recently, I, th I think the rates, have gone up right. for those in the PLD plan for sure. I'm not sure about the teacher teacher plan or not. Um, yeah, I guess I'm not really sure how much okay. the contribution, your actual contributions, has gone up. Is that what's driving? Because uh, you're, you're hearing more and more about communities um, needing to reserve more and increase their reserve policies. Is that driving? Is, are these types of changes what's driving that? Um, you know, I don't I don't know if it's so much that. Um, okay. I mean, I think this is something that's going to come down the road. Yeah. Um, uh, you just hope it doesn't come all at once. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Uh, I want to slide nine just starts the, some of the charts that we have just to kind of show you in graphical form where we're, where we're at, where we've been. Uh, so you can see the trend in fund balance from 2013 being slightly over probably eight to nine million, about nine million dollars. 2015, as I said, the fund balance is about 11.7 million dollars. Um, so that basically equates to 15% um, of your total budget is in fund balance. Um, in, in, but that's that's so that's total fund balance. You have a fund balance policy, um, I think, or a fund balance goal that you want your unrestricted fund balance to be 8.3%. And so when you look at your unrestricted fund balance, that is fund balance that isn't committed in some way, shape, or form. That's actually about 8.2 million out of the 11.7, and that works out to be about 10.7%. So you're above your goal of 8.3% um, in terms of uh, minimum fund balance that you carry. Can you, for the people who are watching, explain it's 8.3% of what? Uh, oh, sorry, 8.3% of your total budget, your, your expenditure budget. <coughs> and can I ask a more elementary question? A, a fund balance is essentially a, a budget line item that we've budgeted but not spent at the end of the year? It, it's, it's the accumulated, it's <coughs> accumulated reserves or it's, it's what you brought in over time in excess of what you spent. So it's basically what's, I guess a simple way to put it would be it's, what's, it's not necessarily what you have in the bank account, but it's, it's kind of like that. It's, it's what you have available to spend going forward. So we don't budget to fund, uh, fund balance. Fund balance happens, mm -hmm. uh, could happen because we spent less than we anticipated raise taxes, more taxes argument than we needed, or in case of excise tax, we far exceeded uh, what we expected to, to get over time and builds up and accumulates in so-called fund balance. Gotcha. Okay. Actually, 
legally, I don't think we're permitted to actually uh, budget for a fund balance. No, correct. No. No. But you would build up a fund balance if you sp if you budgeted an amount and you spent less than that amount. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And the schools are limited to spending only what we reflect in our budget. And as regards, they can't go over that. Amount. So we so cannot go over that amount of what you budgeted. Mm -hmm. gotcha. But because our budget is voted on, so you have an amount that's set as your your maximum mm -hmm. spending for the year, whereas. On the town side, theoretically, if you took in all that extra excise tax, you could say, well, you know what, we really need the new widget so we can then the council could authorize the expenditure. Gotcha. <coughs> and uh, just maybe it's further complicated, uh, the town doesn't have any restrictions. There are guidelines, Christian referenced the policy we have in terms of what we'd like to maintain as a fund balance. The school statutorily cannot maintain a fund balance more than 3%. Uh, the point is they, they want you to not carry a big fund balance uh, spending quickly. I assume that uh, you don't want to be carrying an excess in fund balance either because, I mean, there's a fine line, right, between <laughs> balancing. The, the town's policy is that our goal is 8.3%. However, we, if we have more than 10%, um, the goal is to use that additional, the right. extra above 10 towards capital. Right, oh, towards capital the capital, line. okay. okay. That bond rating agencies would prefer we keep 16%. Hmm. Well, that was going to be my next <laughs> question. What are the bond rating agencies looking for? Yeah, about two months is kind of what I've always yeah. been told, and that's 16%. So 8.3 is one month, it's one month. Right, okay. So is, it, is it considered a fund balance if it's a reserve? Because we can have reserve funds, which are essentially savings accounts. It's still it's still all part of fund balance, but there's different classifications. Right. You could have you could have a restricted fund balance, which means someone outside of the town gave you the money and said you have to spend it on a certain thing, and you don't have any discretion at all on how to use it other than that purpose. Or you've decided for yourself that right. you're going to reserve it for a particular purpose. Gotcha. Right. And then that wouldn't count against yeah. the three percent or our eight point correct percent. Correct. Once we've said it's for this particular purpose, I can. Um, assure you the Finance Committee is looking at the importance of the fund balance as part of this year's budget and we'll have a much deeper conversation around um, both the policy that's currently in place because we just had a, a, a session with our bonding agents, our bonding uh, financial advisor as well and the importance of, of that going forward. So we'll have more conversation on that for sure. Gotcha. Uh, so moving on, uh, slide 10, I've got this slide here showing the trend of property taxes for the last mm -hmm. three years. So property taxes were Slightly under 50 million in, in 2013. Uh, property taxes for the most recent year are uh, closer to 56 million, 55 and a half million or so. Um, so there's been a steady increase in property taxes. Um, also, look at the other. Can I ask? Because uh, you know, the, the great part of all of this is that uh, we get to see ourselves in um, perspective, but it doesn't show us how we compare <coughs> to our communities. So, um, from your experience. Um, Either the fund balance or even particularly the property tax, does that compare p positively, negatively to other communities? And, and I don't need to know yeah. those other communities when you compare that, but yeah. what's your opinion on that? Um, yeah, this, uh, I, I, as far as fund balance goes, the other communities that we've worked with lately are, are I think, closer to the two month of fund balance. Uh, they've got more, the uh, ones I can think of are more, yeah, I think when I did this last week was at, I think, 15%. Others are at you know, probably 12 to 15 percent, I would say. So I'd say overall they have a higher fund balance um, amount carried forward. Um, yeah, some of the other communities, as far as property taxes go, um, uh, you know, I, I think I've seen you know pretty consistent at least three percent increases mm -hmm. across the board. So uh, you know, I, I think maybe might be a little more than some other communities, but um, yeah, because it's really the trend in between. Multiple years because we were talking about this with the with the fund balance of the issue with the bonding agent and um, more and more communities are taking those excess surpluses and putting into reserves and restricting it. Mm -hmm. So I was just curious whether or not we're you know the the change between 13 and 15 mm -hmm. is that similar to South Portland? I mean uh, Brunswick maybe Falmouth, Cumberland, Yarmouth. But once you reserve and you restrict it, it's no longer considered an unreserved fund balance. So when you were talking about the 16, the two months, you were saying that's unreserved. Correct. But I'm going yeah. back to the 15% total. So there's also, gotcha. so 
he mentioned that there was a 15% total, and then the unrestricted was 10.7. So whether we look at the total or whether I look at the 10.7, my question is, is that comparable, the change? The change. Is that comparable to what other communities are experiencing? Are they experiencing better operations, therefore reduced expenses, and increased excise taxes, and you know, kind of all those trends? Yeah, I mean, definitely increased excise taxes across the board. Is, I mean, that's, okay. that's, that's, that's probably the biggest change for most. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, th I think over the last three or four years, I definitely have seen people adding to their fund balance, okay. overall fund balance as well. And then some, you know, some ha others have transfer policies as well, where they transfer money to capital reserves. So I've seen other communities that are, you know, consistently transferring, you know, maybe about a half a million to a million dollars a year to sort of capital, maybe capital reserves or some other reserve accounts. So okay, yeah, I said the general the general trend too would be like, you know, the expenditures are coming in at less than budget too, which is what you experienced as well. On the property tax trend, clearly our increased expenditures year over year contribute to that increase in, in reliance on property tax. But I, I think the other phenomenon in play for Scarborough and others perhaps as well is kind of the tax shift as we get yeah. less from the state well, for yeah. various purposes. Absolutely. <coughs> our means of raising that that revenue is yeah. solely property tax. And so I think that phenomenon bears itself out in this kind of yeah. steady climb. But I also think he, he was, Will was mentioning, or someone was mentioning, the 3% seems to be standard um, in other communities. And frankly, last year and the year before, we were less than 3%. But the school department, yeah, it's more than 3%. Yeah, they, they, this, in the state, um, kind of, they, they had like a moratorium for the last three or four or five years um, where they weren't going to penalize you if you built up more than 3%. In your fund balance, and I, I we work with them. It's kind of all over the place. We've got some that are in the low end, but we had quite a few that were probably 10% or more mm -hmm. um, in fund balance that they built up. But yeah, definitely, uh, mm -hmm. I think here we've lost the subsidy, subsidy. Mm -hmm. but they, I don't think they've lost the subsidy that we had that Scarborough mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I was wondering whether uh, going, we had a uh, fund balance increase of just over $2 million. So we went from eight million to eight million plus to ten million plus, the twenty-five percent increase. Is that unusual or? Um, no, I'd say no. I mean, we do we see that fairly regularly, and and I think where you where you're at the lower, you've been at the lower end of the you know fund balance policy. I think that's pretty healthy to kind of get it up to where you know a little higher number. What's and really encouraging is just being able to show this trend. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly when we're on those rating calls with the rating agencies to, to show that we, we have a policy, we're following it, and we're building consistently a year over year fund bounce back. Ruth and I can attest, I remember when I first got on the council in 2002, I don't think we were over 3.5% total for the count. <coughs> and I uh, remember in our discussions last June, July, when we were grappling a little bit with uh, revenue streams, we increased our estimate of excise taxes yeah. Yeah. from about 4.5 to 4.9. 4. 4. We jacked it up. <coughs> we jacked it up. And, and Ruth, most of this 739,000 on page 44 is uh, excess taxes or over budget is due to excise taxes? If you go to page 84, you can see the exact number. 84? It includes that number includes the excise tax and both excise tax. And so that was six, out of that seven hundred and thirty nine thousand, six hundred and thirty seven thousand of it was excise related tax. Hmm. What was that number? Out of the seven hundred and thirty nine thousand for tax increase from in last year, six hundred and thirty seven thousand of it was excise related, either boats or vehicles. We do have also uh, <laughs> the big Mack trucks, and we, I'm not 100% sure how it works, but we do get a portion of wherever they register it across the country, the state gets that money, and then we, if, they're, if their business is located to start, but we get a little portion of mm -hmm. that, too. And that's roughly about 60000 I think, a year. So we like the big trucks. Does that come in under excise? Yes, it does. Cool. Mm -hmm. Kate, you had said it, uh, refunding of debt service was uh, high, uh, the cause for a larger 
figure uh, contributing to the um, fund balance. On the school side. Yeah. Can um, you expl just explain that for everyone? Oh, it, it was really a timing issue. When we built our budget, we put in a certain amount for debt service with um, the information that we had at that time on what was going to be coming due in the coming year. And then with some manipulations that we had in between when the budget was passed, or it would have been right when the budget was being passed, um, the financial folks were able to reduce the interest payments, which meant that when the bill came due, yep. the bill was for less than what we had budgeted for. Okay. And that's, it's not typical. It doesn't really usually happen with that timing, that time frame. Generally, like for example, this year, Ruth and I were just talking that we'll probably have all of that stuff in place in the next week or so, which <coughs> means that by the time we have our budget out there, it will have exactly the right numbers in it. Well, we'll probably still won't have it. I shouldn't say May. May 12th, <laughs> I think, or, or mid-May, we'll know what the final what the what the final. And that final question is what's on the agenda this evening. That's the piece that, well, there are two pieces that can change. One is the, the you're issuing new bonds in the, in the same time frame as you're building your budget. So there's always a little bit, you, you already have your prior years established and then you have your current year that you're in the process of bonding. So that's one piece that's in motion. And the other piece that, that can be in motion is if you're refunding any of those older bonds and you're going to change the interest rate from prior years, and that was really the piece that, that created that. And uh, that's certainly not the entire um, $600,000, but it's about $200,000 of it. And, and in a normal year, we would come in somewhere like a three hundred to $400,000 savings. Okay. And we're actually, as part of this bond issue that will be coming to the council tonight, we are looking to advance refunds. Uh, 2006, 2007, 2008, and 2009 bonds mm -hmm. um, that are older than 10 years. So uh, paid payments that are due within 10 years or older. And so we expect to see some pretty good savings as a result of that. So we should, even though our interest rate might, you know, payments might go up, they won't go up by as much because we'll be seeing the savings in those years. The the capital improvement line item <coughs> was another one that was a very substantial uh, <coughs> uh, shortfall in, in expenditure. Uh, Eight hundred twenty-five thousand. Can you explain that one for everyone? The capital is uh, account is kind of uh, a funny little thing because we try and budget what we think we're going to do in a year, but sometimes. Um, sometimes you'll see that number is overspent because we're finishing up projects from last year and the expenditures are showing in this year. I'm thinking that that's going to happen probably in 16, is that we didn't finish all the projects we needed to and those expenditures are going to carry into the fiscal 2016. Do you then show that in the 2016 budget so that you anticipate the fact that the, those expenses are going to show up in the 2016 budget? We show the expenditure in the 2016 budget, but we've already but not the budgeted them in the 2015 budget, yeah. so, sort of, so, yeah. So, over the life of the project, it won't be overspent, but you know, because it's a, kind of an ongoing yeah, piece. Yeah, remember the audit's a snapshot and shot in time, right. mm -hmm. and it's, it's really a timing issue as to what you do during that snapshot. Right. Yeah, I'm just trying to make people understand why the fund balance number can fluctuate, mm -hmm. and yet it, there's elements that, from our perspective, are uh, unknown or unpredictable. So well, and I think that the, the capital piece is particularly interesting because you do have projects that don't respect the end of the fiscal year. <laughs> Unlike all the rest of our budgeting, where we're really operating in mm -hmm. these little segments 12-month segments, the capital budget is mm. most often ongoing and most often will cross that June 30th timeline, yeah. uh, particularly on the school side where we do a lot of our work in the summer. So, mm. you know, you're, mm. you're paying a bill in, in mm. August for something that you budgeted for to have, uh, to have the contractors on site in June. Yeah. Peter, you had a question? Well, I just think I, it's a question I've actually asked Tom, and I think what I like to do at some point is I think these questions, because I, I remember last year we were really struggling, what is the number going to be? Because we're trying to 
figure out what we could use to help offset the tax rate increase and that type of thing. And these were two numbers that really significantly changed the picture because I think we thought we were pretty much emptying out all the reserves and using them. It'd just be great to try to learn in more detail about these so when we're in the budget process this year, we can try to figure out what types of variables might uh, impact the reserves so we can get closer to a number because that's, that's a pretty big swing from mm -hmm. where we thought we were to where we are. It's great news, yeah. but it could have gone the other way too. Exactly. So just trying to understand are there some timing things we need to better understand. So it's probably a finance committee conversation. Yeah. I totally agree. Uh, to, to the extent we can uh, understand it and anticipate it and have it be part of our deliberation in setting the budget. Other questions, people in? Some more slides that are presenting the, uh, the budget results and historical trends. Page 11 just kind of shows you the other major revenue, some of the major revenue sources so you can see here. Um, you know, as the state education subsidy is about 4.7 million. That actually went up. Um, that actually went up in the past year, um, slightly. And uh, property, I'm sorry, not property taxes. Excise taxes did increase as we spoke. Uh, it was almost four and a half million in 14. It's now a little over five million um, in 15. So uh, excise taxes did increase as we talked about. And uh, state revenue sharing is down to about 700 thousand dollars. And that's um, uh, that's that's gone down pretty pretty consistently over the past number of years. Uh, there are there are other revenue sources which we don't have in here. Um, you know, community services seems to be doing pretty well. It, that raises almost two million dollars a year. That was up about two hundred thousand from budget. Um, that overage in community services is really related to child care. Uh, some slides now on just major expenditure trends. So you can see the school department um, or education, but education expenditures in total uh, of about uh, forty-one and a half million uh, compared to the prior year of about thirty-nine million. So it's important to understand too that that, that is in line with what was budgeted. So these amounts are in line with the budget, but you can see that. The trend for education, the education budget over the last three years uh, of an increase there. Um, other major expenditure categories, you can just kind of see here, uh, public safety is the next largest category. Uh, public safety expenses exceed about $9 million a year now, um, up from about $8 million from three years ago. Public works pretty steady at about six, a little over $6 million a year. That's gone down a little bit. And debt service is at about four, four and a half million, I think. And I think this, this debt service figure excludes, does not include the school debt service. The school debt service is included in the school's number. Uh, this debt service figure here is uh, the town only, and that's about four and a half million a year. That debt service line is just the, the graphic really demonstrates it. Uh, our goal is really to keep that as level and as steady as possible. So that's not the you know, limit the volatility as best we can in debt service. It's one of the things we can control in terms of where we borrow, how we borrow, what we refund, and we'll keep that as steady as possible. I don't know if there's any further questions on the town. We do have a separate set of financial statements for the school department. In a, um, I think just two or three slides on the school department to go over if there are um, if there aren't any other questions on the town, town side of things. <coughs> uh, so some of you may have uh, the, the, the school department's financial statements. Um, you know, they're definitely. I'm just going to say I think we we passed them out. So you did. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, they're different than, than the towns in that it's a, it's a fund only financial statement, so it definitely makes it easier to. Write <coughs> uh, uh, but we have issued an unmodified opinion or a clean opinion on the schools report as well. We want to make sure everybody's aware of that. Um, and you know, the fees. Similar accounting presentation, pages three and four. You've got your different funds. You've got your general fund, which is the, the most significant fund, which carries on the operations of the school, uh, the day to day operations. Uh, we've got what you call special revenue funds. So these are all the different grants and programs that the school runs that are funded from federal or state outside sources. And then we have a separate capital projects fund. Um, if you want to move right on to the budgetary schedule, that's on page five. Uh, 
School Department. Uh, so as we were talking about, you see, for the, for, the, for the year for the School Department, uh, revenues were slightly lower than budget by 44138 Expenditures were favorable to budget, so we spent 593997 less than budgeted, and uh, that's kind of really borne across all the different uh, categories, really, every just about every category um, was able to hold the line and not, not uh, you know, use the entire budget. For the year, uh, the plan, there was a planned use of fund balance of $800,000. You can see that towards the bottom of the, the final budget column. Uh, actual fund balance used for the year was 390127 so that is your, your expenditures and transfers exceeded your revenues by 39127 um, So that is a favorable result compared to planning on using $800,000. Uh, so for the year, uh, the end of the year with a fund balance of 965250 I think we've got that on a on the chart here on page 15 or slide 15. Mm -hmm. We're trying to see the school's fund balance where it was up above a million two and thirteen, got a little higher in fourteen to a million three fifty, and then we spent money out of fund balance now to get us down to nine sixty five two fifty in total. What what is that percentage? And that's two point two percent. And of that nine sixty five we have allocated 425 as revenue in fiscal 16. And that's part of the conversation that Peter's talking about whether we're actually going to use that or how we're going to land at the end of the year. And, and just so I understand that, that, so what we're doing is instead of planning to use 800,000, which is what we planned last year, and this coming budget, you were planning to use the 425. 425, correct. That was approved as part of the budget last year. Right. In the, in the state, this three percent rule that we've been talking about. If your if your fund balance, if the school's un, unrestricted fund balance exceeds three um, percent, well, the, the state basically expects you to use that money. They, that's why I talked to Joanne Allen the other day. She said, well, they give you basically three years to do it, mm -hmm. and then if you don't, you know, then if you don't, then there's well, basically penalties. They could reduce your subsidy or whatever. I don't yeah. think I've ever seen it happen, but um, the assumption is that you'll use that money. <laughs> And, yeah. and reduce the local allocation going forward. Well, and, and in the past four years, or maybe five, they waived the statute because there was so much volatility with the, the economy crashing. Um, but just now in this year, current year, we're back to that requirement being in place. And it's, as George, I think, was saying earlier, they don't really want school districts to be hanging on to large fund balances. Mm -hmm. They want it to be moving through. So. I think that the expectation is if you're above 3%, you're either going to be using it in the way that we just talked about, applying it to a, an ensuing year as revenue, or they'll cut your subsidy eventually. Mm -hmm. And that's, that would be their remedy, would be to say, well, if you've got all this money sitting in your back right. pocket, then why are we sending you any money? Mm -hmm. And since they're not sending us any anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but could we, could we put it toward a, I mean, could we turn it into reserve, a reserve account and oh, put it toward... I don't know. Yeah, you can. Yeah, if, there's, if you vote, if it's voted on, you can. Uh, it can be moved into a, a reserve, like a capital have, reserve. It would have to be a school capital reserve. School capital, yes. Because school, capital. school funding that funding that has been allocated for schools has to be spent on education. Now, exactly, Chris, Christian could say, well, you know, we're going to fill the reserve account because we're in a need to do a renovation on a, one of our properties, and this is going to be a good way to spend that money. I, I doubt that we're going to be rolling in that much fund balance yeah. that we're going to need to do that. Um, you know, traditionally we've come in under the three percent or, or close to it if we've been able to manage well. Yeah. The town's fund balance incorporates the school's fund balance, so right. their numbers are built into right. that eleven million. Yeah. And the perennial challenge in the final discussions in deciding the expected tax rate is how much fund balance do you feel comfortable using? Right. I think I can predict that that will always be in final consideration, and so it's, it's very hard, despite best of intentions, uh, in building fund balance. Uh, showing this slow yet steady progress in the right direction is, is meaningful. Though. So, uh, at the end of last fiscal year, June 30, 2015, we had 965,000 <coughs> in the schools fund balance. 
and it was budgeted for the 2016 fiscal year to use 425,000 as a revenue source. Correct. And you won't know until August, September, whatever, sometime after the end of this fiscal year, whether you've actually used any of that fund balance. Yeah, I think we'll have a, a pretty good idea by June 30th, but we won't know for certain sure yeah. until we get to uh, the last of the bills coming in, which come in over the but, summer. Okay, yeah. so probably... I think we can do a pretty good guess on budget to actual by the time we get past the third quarter. Um, it tends to be one of the things that's on my to-do list at yeah. a time when there are a lot of other things on my to-do list. But, yeah. um, you know, it goes to Tom's comment earlier. When I, I promised him $300,000 uh, during the budget deliberations last year, <laughs> I meant $300,000, and I didn't really want to promise mm. uh, 600000 which yeah. is what we actually picked up. Yeah, it's just, it, for me, it's part of the problem of you have uh, financials through the 2015 year, but yet you're doing a budget now for, for 2017. Yeah, exactly. So you have to actually take into account what you think you did in 2016. Mm -hmm. One of the revenue sources that we have, what we do is we know what we collected, for example, in 2015. We don't use that for the 2016 budget. We use it for the 2017 budget. So we always know what number we're using ahead of time. So that might be something to consider. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't know that. Could, could, you, could you explain that a little further? I'm sorry, I didn't quite... So we receive some kind of impact fees, and we might collect them all during uh, fiscal 2015. So at the end of fiscal 15, you know, we'll know what that number is. But when we're doing our budget for 16, we don't know what that number is. Mm -hmm. So what we decided to do was we said, okay, when we're working on our 2016 budget, we're not going to look at the 2015 revenues and where we are. We're going to look at where we were in 2014. So we're uh, like a year behind, but we always know at that point what number we can use. Mm -hmm. And then there's no there's no guesswork on you know because once you throw a number out there, it becomes oh. gospel. And yeah, there's, now, a, you know, there's you, a reliance. You got six hundred and, and yeah. she only got four. Then right. yeah. everybody yeah. would say, "Hey, <laughs> very true." I'm fired again. Gospel, gossip, <laughs> same thing. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so the last slide I have, and then I'll just make comments, uh, a couple more comments here in the financials. Um, but just, you can just see on slide 16 that the expenditure trend for the last three years for this, just the school department category. So regular instruction is uh, the largest category at about 17.5 million um, compared to uh, just under 16, uh, probably about 16 million in the prior year. Uh, special education has been fairly steady the last few years at about six and a half million a year, <coughs> and debt service also steady as well at about four and a half million a year, 4.6 million. So basically, the same debt service as the um, as the town. And again, going back to sort of Sean's question about benchmarks, is there anything on this that stands out for you? Yeah, I mean, it's that's that can it can get difficult, especially looking at the schools because other schools like our debt is is not um, not. Uh, Supported by the state, we're paying for this on our own. Right. You could look at like you could look at like a city of Stanford, which has almost no debt. Uh, they're going to build a hundred million dollars school this year, but it's going to so their, their number. You know, if you're looking at their debt service number, it's going to be a big number. But you have to also realize that that ninety percent of that is going to be paid by the state, so it's really not going to cost them anything. So it's really hard to you know it's really hard to compare. But I mean, I think that's that's the a difference between Scarborough and some other communities that we decided to build mm -hmm. schools and pay for ourselves. Uh, another variable that will show itself there is we've chosen, the voters have chosen for these big bond issues, for the capital projects, uh, to make uh, sizable investments. Uh, other places have similar needs. They simply haven't had the will or mm -hmm. haven't paid the bill yet. Uh, the bill's not going away. It's only getting more expensive. So they do further maintenance. Um, but clearly, by every measure I've looked at, Scarborough <coughs> has a higher debt ratio than most. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a number of factors to that. Sure. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's in an comfortable range by any stretch, but comparatively speaking, it's higher than most. I just had a question on the looking at the school budget on page 85 in the, in the thicker 
thing and then looking at on page five and, and this. If, you, if you notice the special services or, or regular instruction is much higher in the, in the thicker book on page 85. And I'm just curious what the difference was from. Well, I think special ed is lumped in with there on this particular presentation. That's got special ed's got to be in there too. Oh, okay. But it's not broken out separately. Yep. I had another question when I was reading the uh, the budget. Could could you talk a little bit about page twenty seven of the second book and like what what exactly we're we're looking at there? Page twenty seven? Twenty seven. I'm looking at the, the change to the net net position. Okay, so this is yeah, this is a summary of uh, so we're not remember when I s let me see, I'll make sure I was speaking right about this. When I was speaking about the different three different sets of accounting records that are in here, this is solely this is like this is the entire town uh, kind of grouped into one uh, amalgamated to one category. So this is on a on an accrual basis. So completely different. So you're when you talk about fund balance, fund balance is completely different than net position. So like when you see this big number here at the end, net position of fifty nine million dollars. Most of that is, is your buildings, your roads, um, you know, uh, equipment, buses, uh, net of depreciation, <coughs> net of debt. That's that's the big difference in that when you're looking at your fund balance, it doesn't include a, a value for those items. Those items are are spent. They're, they they come out of fund balance when they're when they've been expended. But on the full accrual basis of accounting, those are capitalized and depreciated over their useful life. So these numbers here are not they're they're. They're just they're going to be significantly different than the other figures we've been talking about. One counselor a while back essentially said that that's what we could sell our town for. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's true or not, but <laughs> no, but it is an important number because you know one of the things that I wanted to ask outside of some of the specifics is um, if it's possible to maybe get some advice. One of the things that the finance committee and I think the council as a whole wants to do is to find and understand what are reasonable metrics to measure the town's performance from a financial perspective, whether it's, um, you know, a liquidity ratio like, a, you know, quick ratio or whether it's debt to capital because that number is important when you're talking about debt to capital and what you can actually borrow on it. So I don't know, would you be able to help if we, you know, through the manager uh, can afford to, um, get some insight on what are, for this community, what are good measures that we can look at over time and only compare ourselves to, because I'm not looking to compare us to a Portland. I, I just want to know, for the last 10 years, what has our liquidity been? Mm -hmm. And is that something that we can rely on going forward to for future planning? Um, Ruth's doing some great work right now in comparing data, demographic data, with other communities, but then you know, I want to look at just Scarborough by itself, and if we could get some help doing that, that would be really, really good. Yeah, it's definitely something we could we could help with in developing the right one of the right metrics to look at. Yeah, in, in essence, what we're trying to create is a dashboard of metrics that we can show. Here is where we are for the last three years, but here is maybe uh, the last ten years so it's actual in a graph, not in actual tables, but in a graph, something like that. So, I, yeah, it definitely does get tougher when you talk about different communities too, because there's so much variation in communities and some budget completely, you know, some budget completely different than right. how you would budget in, so you can't always match it up. But I, I think that's something that the, the GFOA folks have kind of, I think they may have some sort of project on that maybe a few years ago. I thought I remembered something about yeah, it. But the New England State Government Finance Officers Association, through a grant, did some kind of system-wide, here's how we do things. And uh, they issued it, but the, the big drivers for those communities, I think they left. <laughs> yeah. And then the grant money. Goes I mean, personally, what I'm what I'm thinking of is, you know, here are three metrics that the council as a whole can look at to determine is it going in the right direction financially. Mm -hmm. And then the subset of that is there are certain components. Maybe there's two or three others that are within that that you can then take to, to for the finance committee to drive down and determine are we going in the right direction. And then that becomes, in essence, an executive dashboard that can be shared and becomes part of the budget um, from you know year over year from the manager. You know, the other thing I'd say, this is great. It's a great snapshot. 
in next year to think about, you know, to, think about <coughs> you know, to, to wherever there is any appropriate benchmarks mm -hmm. that you could we, you could just add as an additional sort of just reference point. Yeah. Sure. That way, it would just help us as we go through and say what what what's within norm, what seems to be a little bit out of norm. Yeah. And maybe we can focus a little bit of time on that. Would be yeah. really yeah. helpful. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can definitely speak a little more towards the Sean's question earlier with fund balances. I mean, you know, I guess as it, from the taxpayer standpoint, you know, the town doesn't ha hasn't you know, necessarily amassed a, you know, a large war chest. So if that's, I guess, I think that's always the question: is you know, yeah. whose hands is the money? Is the money better to be in the town or the, or the taxpayers? I mean, there's definitely some communities we work with that have a small, you know, relatively low um, school enrollment and, and low tax commitment related to the schools, and they have a high, um, you know, high uh, uh, business and retail tax base. And you know, there's a few communities that that do have very significant fund balances, and I know that's the question that their taxpayers are asking: so why, you know, why do you so much in taxes? And Amazing. We heard it the other night. That some communities are greater than 20 percent. Yes, there's some, and there's, but then, and then their answer to that, I know, in, in, in from past experience, with some of them was, well, you know, we don't have, we don't have, we don't have any debt either. We don't have to bond for anything. So we've got, you know, we basically have our capital plan for the next five, ten years funded, and so that's, you know, it's, it's weighing all of that. You know, you can go out and debt you for the interest cost, and you have the money on hand. So you know, there definitely are a few communities that I can think of that have, you know. Significantly more in reserves, and, but whether that's appropriate or not, it's, it's, mm -hmm. can't really say that for sure. And then it also depends on whether the businesses, if you have uh, one big paper mill in your community, oh, yes. and oh, you're yeah, paying 90% of your property taxes, you want to have a big reserve in case yeah. they decide to right. yeah. go away. How diversified yeah. is your revenue right. stream? Mm -hmm. right. That's one of the benefits of our local economy is the diversification. We get right. high marks on that yeah. and also a percent of the property taxes. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, I believe that concludes uh, the presentation. And certainly, if there are any follow-up right. questions, you can field them to the Ruth, and we can answer them at some point in time later on. But thank you, Christian. I yeah, think we should. Excellent. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The finance committee will recall this. Uh, we are currently out with an RFP on the street uh, for auditing services, and the, the, the term is up with our relationship. We certainly hope that they will participate in that in that process. And you reminded me, we did add in your suggestion some benchmarking or metric uh, components to that. So it'll be interesting to see what the response to that and if there's some extra costs associated with that analysis. I believe those bids, the potential proposals will close this Friday. And so within the next couple of weeks, we'll be sitting down. The financial has nothing to do with the next couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about audit will be probably. You see a little breather. <laughs> 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 That's the word I was looking for. Good. I think we're uh, thank you. Thank you. we're in recess uh, shortly. Uh, it's past seven, so hopefully we can reconvene. That point. One of the managing partners was Bruce Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.